OK, ladies and gentlemen, whenever looking at a problem, automatically the first thing you want to do is set it equal to 0 and try to factor it. So the first thing I do is I set this equal to 0. So I have 4x squared minus 4x minus 8 equals 0. Then try to factor it. I can factor out a 4, left with x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Then, um, uh, then you just go and factor this. So 4 times x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. Now, since it's all three of these, or these two are set multiplied to give you 0, you can divide by 4 to get rid of the 4. So you can say x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x minus 2 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. So we could say x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. Now, I did that really quickly because we've already gone through how to do all that, right? And not always is that going to be factorable. So what happens if it's not factorable? So let's pretend that when you subtract 8 that you don't have a factorable equation. The next thing you guys want to look at is to determine, is this a perfect square trinomial? Because if it's a perfect square trinomial, I don't have to set it equal to 0. Meaning, can I write this as a factor squared? All right. So what that really means is the same factor multiplied by itself. So obviously, we have to use 2x and 2x, because you can't use 4x and x. So I have 2x times 2x is going to give me 4x squared. Then I have to have one, what two numbers multiply to give you 1. It could be 1 and 1, or it could be negative 1 and negative 1. However, I know that I'm going to use negative 1 and negative 1 because my middle term is negative. Because negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. And 2x times negative 1 is, again, 2x. Add those up together, you're going to negative 4x. So my answer is negative 2x minus 1 squared equals 9. Can we solve that without using the zero product property? Yes, of course we can. How do we solve that? Inverse operations. So therefore, you have 2x minus 1 equals plus or minus 3. So then, once you have plus or minus 3, we already know I kind of did the problem twice. But we already know what you'll do is I just set it up differently. I do 2x minus 1 equals negative 3, and 2x minus 1 equals positive 3. So therefore, you just add 1. And there you go. Oops. Um, well, I try to do both in there. Negative 2. OK, so by doing it by the square root method, you guys notice I get the exact same answers. OK, yes, question? OK, so always, guys, you can always look to that first factoring form. But a lot of these problems are not going to be factorable as is. So you might have to go back and use the square root method.